Welcome to the NGO Artist Studio live at European Utility Week. I'm Rose and I'm joined now by Peter Hermans, Chief Technology Officer at Steddin. Thank you, Peter, for joining us at yeah. the end of the day. Happy, happy to be here. Um, this interview is a short time, but it, within the time we do have, it'd be great to, to look, try and unpack demand side flexibility. What is your view on how it can be unlocked? Well, the, the first thing, and I think that's very important when, important when we talk about demand side flexibility, it is about the customer. If the, if the customer does not change his behavior and uh, is willing to, uh, to exploit the flexibility there, mm -hmm. and the whole energy transition should not work. So the first thing would be we listen to the customer and we adopt the system to his needs uh, so that he feels comfortable, so that he has comfort, and that he understands what his contribution to the uh, to the energy system of the future should be. So that that that's key. Then, secondly, I think uh, the system should be open. Uh, I think when we talk about demand side flexibility and when we talk about uh, 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 en energy transition, the business model will change. This is a business model transformation. So the existing business models will vanish and new business models will come. So the system needs to be open for other parties to accommodate and to, mm. to, 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 step, to step in. And certainly I think that, that it's important that, that the regulation then uh, enab enables that, uh, that transition. What is the Steadin customer telling you? What do they want? We should listen to them. Mm. Uh, for example, we are now in the, in the rollout of the, of the smart meter. Uh, we, we're doing well, uh, but we see that uh, we roll out the, the smart meter, but we have to do a good job to convince the customers where the smart meter is used for and what is it bringing, bringing for them. Mm. Because today, uh, or in the past, uh, in, in the press, there is still some rumor, well, uh, the grid operator can see everything in the data, etc. Well, that's not definitely not what we're going to do, but the smart, the smart meter will, will play a crucial role in, in the new energy system. Uh, and should also be a good supportive function for new, new energy services which the suppliers will, op will offer uh, to the customers. But there we, there we have to do a good job, next to our daily work of course, uh, and keep keeping the outages low and making fast new, new connections. So what's been your approach in communicating smart meter benefits to customers? Um, to be transparent, to be very, very, very clear. Uh, we recently uh, announced a, a, a new campaign, the new energy generation, really appealing that we as a neutral market facilitator feels a, a strong responsibility that it's not only running the businesses today, but what we have also the responsibility to help and to enable the customers to, to move forward in this energy transition. And in your market, do you feel the, the competition from new entrants, new retailers? Yeah. And I think that's something new what we see uh, is, uh, as, as DSOs, we facilitate the market mm. and you see from transition that we focus on the, uh, on the existing players and that we now see, well, we need to, make, make, need to pay more attention to the new players, mm. to the new players in the town. So we will have uh, contacts with, with startups. Uh, we will also have contact, have contacts now also with municipalities because also they are coming into the, into the game. So uh, it's, it's, it's diversing the, the focus to, to new, new actors. Yeah, so you see it more as collaboration yeah, and, rather than separate and the, entities. And, and DSOs are also, as they are not in the competitive market, they, uh, the customers think what, what is going on and uh, mm. they, they could go to a commercial market party, uh, but then, well, maybe they want to sell some, some, something. Then the DSO is more the, 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 trust, the trusted party. And we bring knowledge to the customers and to the start mm. to the startups and the communities who set up set up new panels, etc., to help to help them and to go on the way. So you find there still is that trust that you yeah. are the provider of my electricity, therefore I trust yeah. you. And we we really feel responsibility also to go to a carbon neutral uh, society mm -hmm. in the future. So it's more than just running the grid. Yeah. So, so what is the ideal TSO-DSO relationship, do you believe, to unlock this flexibility? Well, we have been working, uh, we could take that for an hour. Uh, <laughs> we have been working on that team for, uh, for a year with a group on the European level. And the ideal uh, TSO-DSO relation is 
uh, is a relation where, where there is trust and respect. Mm. Uh, and there have been a lot of fights in the past also on, 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 net, on network codes. But if you really start to understand that it's one system where two actors are acting upon, mm. you, you need to collaborate, you need to come together. And then the, the first step is that both DSOs and DSOs start to understand their business. We as a DSO, that we understand the business from a TSO, that the TSO understand the business from a DSO. And in the, in the discussion which we, uh, we had in the group, actually we, we reframed the, the, the challenge and it, uh, and it by, by putting three questions on the table. One is the question, what is the ambition from a TSO and a DSO? So let the TSO speak out what is what you want, and we spoke out what, what we want. But then the second question was much more important. What are your fears? Mm. What was what the TSO was afraid for and what was the DSO afraid for? And when that came on the table, then we could into the third question and say, well, okay, what could the TSO do to reduce the fear mm. of a DSO? And what could the DSO do to reduce the fear of a TSO? And by having that type of discussion, we, we reframed it and, and we were able to, to, to come much more closer. So it, it's really about respect uh, and trust. Uh, can you give us some examples of the type of fears that both sides yeah. are expressing? Um, the, 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 the TSO say, well, they are in the balancing job. They, mm. they do balancing the network, but they see the reserves on the transport grid uh, decrease because every, every production is decentralized and is actually connected in the future to the distribution grid. So they say, well, if we want to continue our balancing job, we, we need to have be able to control those reserves, but they are not on our grid anymore, it is on your grid. So you stand in the way, go away, because we, we, we need to control that. Mm. And then on the other hand, the DSO said, hey, wait, we are in responsible for the load and the stability uh, of, of, of the distribution grid. And if you're gonna play with the reserves connecting on our grid, then we lose control, and then mm. maybe we get congestion and we got voltage, voltage problems. That, that were the, the, most, the, most, the most fears. And I think it was very good that was that, that was explicitly put on, yeah. the, on the table. Would that be a key piece of advice to your CTO peers to do try and encourage an exercise yeah, we, like that? We, 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 we had a group of uh, 20, 25 people wor working on this, TSOs and DSOs on mm. the European space. Uh, it, it started with a lot of persuading discussions. So I tell you that I know it better than you yeah. and the other way around. We so said, you have to break down some yeah, barriers said, to begin with. Quit, quit that. So we actually we said, okay, we, we start with five use cases and a blank sheet of paper and make subgroups and start start mm. start start working work, working on that. That 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 was, that was the first the first step. And then the, the, the second step was what, what I said was a small group, mm. four four of us build, building the trust and, and to see how, how we come to come together. And that, yeah. that that proved well and at the at the launching event in, in Brussels actually I said well this is the first engagement between TSOs and mm. DSOs what actually was in some set, certain level successful. So we should reflect why we were successful. And it was in the approach, it was in the process. And I, advi I advise the, uh, the Brussels associations to, to reuse this formula okay. again, because we, we, need, we need to do more in the future. Mm, more dialogue. I mean, yeah, that's what you, you know, we was gonna ask you actually about the barriers, but I think we've kind of covered that, that kind of breaking down the yeah, what Initial distrust. We, 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 had, we had this afternoon also the discussion on, on barriers, and, and, and we talked about regulation. And, mm. and at one point was said, regulation is always too late. The market is faster, mm. the technology development are faster. The, the, the regulation lagging behind is, is, is certainly a barrier. On another one, the, there was a lady from Italian regulator said, well, if you do not regulate too much, then uh, you have the free space to, to operate. So that that, mm. that well, that's a that's a nice nice yeah. nice nice statement. Quite refreshing. But uh, the the regulation, as I see it, sometimes still takes the approach that uh, the liberal thought, uh, the market should do it. The market should do it. And as you are a regulated business, DSOs and TSOs, you should not do it. Mm. So keep the DSOs and, D and TSOs as small as possible because the market should do it. And I. I, ch I challenge that statement okay. uh, because DSOs and GSOs, they are also the facilitator of the market and if they bring more data to the market and they enable the market, then actually the market could grow mm. uh, much faster as, as it does now. But then you have to open up a little bit uh, and give that to the DSOs and the yeah. TSOs. So how can DSOs contribute to customer empowerment? Yeah. It's quite a big uh, issue at this event and, and probably you know, in general yeah. life. 
Um, actually, I gave a presentation on that two years ago on the Utility Week in, okay. in, in Amsterdam. Maybe what, what people do not recognize today is there is a market and suppliers and service providers uh, serve customers. And actually the, the DSO is invisible there because mm -hmm. actually we have uh, grid capacity as a copper plate. There's, there's always sufficient capacity. The only uh, moment that customers phones the, the DSO is when there is an outage mm. or that when they need additional connect, connection, more uh, stronger uh, connect connection. But that is the, that is the current situation. The, the future situation is that there will be an interaction uh, between the grid operators and, and the play in the market because otherwise the, the overall system will not be affordable anymore. So then it is important that the DSOs make very clear what they offer to the market as what I would say a wholesale portfolio. Today we, we might say well we, we transport uh, electrons and gas molecules but, but that is the, the physical thing in the grid. What we do, what we actually should do is we say well, what is our, our service, our wholesale service which we offer to, uh, to suppliers which they can package then in, uh, in solutions to, 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 the, to the end customer. And that type of thinking, uh, my, my background is also 20 series in telecoms, mm -hmm. where I saw that business transformation going, okay. that is a little bit lagging behind. And in, in that way, uh, DSOs uh, and DSOs also should, should start to think, what is your service portfolio? Think outside, outside it, N not talk about mm. assets and managing assets, but talk about what is it what I deliver to the outside market. And then really start to, to differentiate in that, because if, you, if, if we need to transport and distribute energy always uh, for every appliance, that could be very expensive. Okay, if the society is willing to pay for that, fine. But if society will say, well, the basic needs should be served, but okay, if uh, somebody wants to uh, charge his Tesla or all those things which really pushes up the load in the grid, you could have a discussion whether that should be uh, paid by societal uh, finances or whether that's more cost reflective that uh, an, indivi an individual customer should pay for that and not all the other customers in the same in the same street. Mm. Peter, very interesting to talk to you. We've run out of time. Okay. Thank you for joining us. Is and it, you, you think any, any use of this of what I said to you or <laughs> Absolutely. is it too, too technical? Uh, and if you'd like to watch any more of the interviews from European Facility Week, you can catch them on the Enterati YouTube channel.